السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم افتح علينا افتح العارفين انفعنا بما علمتنا يا الله علمنا ما ينفعنا دائما يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين Today, inshallah, we, uh, we will uh, have a, a, a commentary about a hadith that shows the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over us, that shows that his mercy, that shows his love to, to the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An Abi Huraira radiyallahu anhu, أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال قال الله عز وجل وقوله الحق إذا هم عبدي بحسنة فاكتبوها له حسنة فإن عملها فاكتبوها له بعشر أمثالها وإذا هم بسيئة فلا تكتبوها فإن عملها فاكتبوها بمثلها فإن تركها وربما قال لم يعمل بها فاكتبوها له حسنة ثم قرأ من جاء بالحسنة فله عشر أمثالها ومن جاء بالسيئة فلا يجزى إلا مثلها وهم لا يظلمون So uh, it was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said, and his saying is the truth. So Allah said, when my slave considers doing something good, then write it as one good for him if he acts upon it then write write 10 of the same for him and when he considers doing something evil when he considers doing something evil then do not write it if he acts upon it then write it if he leaves it. And perhaps he said, if he does not act upon it, then write a good reward for him. And then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited, Man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha Whoever comes on the day of judgment with a good deed will have ten times the like therefore to his credit. And whoever comes with an evil deed will not be recompensed except the like therefore. The like there. Oh, so وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And they will not be wronged. Subhanallah, how merciful this is. How loving this is. How caring this is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لَن نَسُؤْكَ فِي أُمَّتِكَ we will not let you down in for your ummah, for your nation. Another narration of this hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَتَبَ الْحَسَنَاتِ وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ ثُمَّ بَيَّنَ ذَلِكَ فَمَنْ هَمَّ بِحَسَنَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا كَتَبَهَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى عِنْدَهُ حَسَنَةً كَامِلَةً وَإِنْ هَمَّ بِهَا فَعَمِلَهَا كتبها الله عشر حسنات إلى سبعمائة ضعف إلى أضعاف كثيرة 
وإن هم بسيئة فلم يعملها كتبه الله عنده حسنة كاملة وإن هم بها فعملها كتبه الله سيئة واحدة So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered that the good and the bad deeds be written down uh, then he explained it clearly how to to be written how to be recorded so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if uh, who he who intends to do a good deed but does not does not uh, do it so he who intends to do a good deed but it, but does not do it then allah records it for him as a full good deed but if he carries out his intention then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes it down for him from 10 to 700 faults and even more but if he intends to do an evil act and has not done it then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes it down with him as a full good deed but if he intends it and has done it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes it down as one bad deed. So the whole thing revolves about intention. So what's your intention? Is it to do something good or something evil? So if someone thinks of doing something good, and for any circumstance, for any condition, he could not do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will record it for him as a good deed. And if he was able to, to, uh, to act upon it and to fulfill what he had in his intention, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will record it for him uh, uh, and will have the reward uh, from 10 to 700 folds and sometimes more. But again, what about the intention of the bad deed? If someone intends to do an evil act, something bad, and he does not do it, then Allah will write it for him as a full good deed. But if he intends to have a bad deed and to do a bad deed, and then he does it, then Allah writes it for him as one bad deed. This is the utmost mercy and the utmost blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has bestowed upon his slaves. In our daily life, uh, when we hire someone for any type of work, we pay him. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَعْطُوا الْأَجِيرَ أَجْرَهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَجِفَّ عَرْقُهُ So give the hireling his wages before his sweat dries. And which means reward people for their work immediately as they are done. Do not wait. Do not put off paying the due rights for people who did something for you. Just pay it on time. And when you pay it, pay it full. And if you add more, then you will be rewarded for this, for this extra that you have done. Now look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, if someone does a good deed, Allah rewards him immediately. And this is what it's said in the hadith. Uh, uh, or the first um, version, it is فَكْتُبُوهَا لَهُ فَكْتُبُوهَا لَهُ So he orders the angels to record it immediately. Now, what's the other case? 
The other case, if someone does something bad or uh, an evil to, uh, act, act, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the angels to wait and not to record it immediately. Not to record a bad deed for this person. Why? This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he orders the angels to wait, then the reason for that is that this person might repent and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and Allah will forgive him. Especially when he makes dua and Allah has promised, Ud'uni astajib lakum. Ask me and I will fulfill your promises. But we have to know how to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, for someone who does a bad deed, Allah will not record it immediately for him. Just in case that this person feels sorry uh, and ask Allah for forgiveness. Now, if it is a good deed, as we mentioned, the reward will be 10 times and up to 700 times. And in other cases, way much more. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha'. Allah multiplies his reward for whoever he wills. So how does this reward system work? Uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, in Ayah 261, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ أَنْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَابِلْ فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةٍ مِئَةُ حَبَّةٍ وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ So this reward system is explained in the Quran is explained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 261, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the example of those who spend their wealth in the way, in the way of Allah, yunfiquna amwalahum fi sabilillah, for the sake of Allah only. Again, the main point that revolves about Everything revolves about it is the intention. And the intention here is, is to be for the sake of Allah, only for the sake of Allah. No other intention. Some people spend so that people would say they are generous. So they got their reward in dunya, but they lose their, their reward in akhirah. But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, fi sabilillah. So their intention is just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what happens? So, uh, so the example of those who spend their wealth in the way for the, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like a seed, a seed of grain which grows seven spots. Okay, what about this habba? What about those spikes? In each spike is a hundred grains. So we had one, then we had seven uh, spikes and each spike has a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies his reward. Wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha. For whom, whom he, he wills. Wallahu wasi'un alim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all encompassing and knowing. 
He knows the real intention of people. Why? Why did you do that? Why? Why did you uh, uh, act like this? Why did you look at this person like that? Why? 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 Allah knows everything. Then you will be highly rewarded. Now, if the earth that you plant one seed in in this in the earth gives you back spikes that have a hundred grain, then this makes us think of the great reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for his righteous slaves. And we've mentioned earlier that this reward is not an eye has seen and not anyone has thought of. So Allah's reward is unmatchable. It is not bounded, no limits. It's continuous. It won't get less. Allah can give anyone he wills without being questioned. Why did you give him this? Why did you not give him that? Is this too much? Is this not? No one can question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the believer should be happy that his life is highly rewarded when he does something good. If he prays, he will be rewarded. If he fasts, he will be rewarded. If he gives charity, he will be rewarded. If he performs hajj, he will be rewarded. If he is good to his parents, he will be rewarded. If he's good to his to his neighbors, if he is good to his siblings, if he is good to if he is fulfilling the responsibilities that he has towards his family, then he will be rewarded. So whatever a person does that is as per Allah's system, then he will be rewarded. And the people of Allah understand the system fully. So they hasten to pay lots of sadaqah other than their dues of the ka of zakah. So they are paying. Now, as we mentioned, this system, if you put one grain, then it will be multiplied. The, the reward, if you do something good, it will be tenfold to up to 700 times. Now, when you pay sadaqah, when you pay zakah. So sadaqah is something extra that you pay uh, more than what you, uh, more than uh, the amount of zakah. And by more, I mean extra, not more uh, in, uh, in how much it is, no, extra. So you pay your dues of zakah, then you pay extra sadaqah. And when they, when they pay, they know that they will be highly rewarded. They know that this sadaqah will purify this, their, their money. They know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them reward in multi, multi, much more multiplied than what they, what they paid. So they, they, those friends of Allah, those people of Allah, they mention this to each other so that they will compete in paying for the sake of Allah. And by doing this, they are actually applying uh, the, ayah of, uh, the ayahs of Surah Al-Mutaffifin when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ تَعْرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ نَظْرَةَ النَّعِيمِ يُسْقَوْنَ مِنْ رَحِيقٍ مَخْتُومٍ خِتَامُهُ مِسْكٌ وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ So this is the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed 
uh, uh, rewarded for the righteous people who are who will be in pleasure and they will be on adorned couches they will be observing and if you look at them you will recognize in their faces the radiance of pleasure they will be given a drink yusqawna min rahiqin makhtum pure wine that was sealed khitamuhu misk and the last of it is misk so for this reward, let the competitors compete. So it's uh, something amazing to understand the real meaning of the ayahs. For this, for this pleasure, let people compete one, with one another to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to do good, to, to have uh, right deeds. And it is said, when you got, guide someone or when you make someone do something good, then you will get the same reward as he did. He will get full reward and you will get the same reward. So spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those people, the people of Allah, they, they know how to compete. So they urge each other to do more righteous deeds. And this is why it is said, Ashir man yanhaduka haluh wa yadulluka ala Allahi maqaluh. So befriend with those who, when you sit with them, you feel closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You feel that you want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you look at their faces, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And their words remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you sit with them, you feel closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they their words will urge you to, to make something good. So the good suhba is one of the ways that gets you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a true friend reminds you when you make a mistake. He makes you come back to the right to the right path he takes your hand when you slip he corrects you if you make a bad deed and this is why it is so important to always make dua that allah saves us and provides us with good sahaba also, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides our children with good sahaba. Look at the time that we are living in now. You see the parents are righteous, you see the, the, the parents are good, but unfortunately, one of their children or some of their children are not are not following the right path. They are following a friend who drags them to bad deeds. So we have to make dua for our children that Allah protects them. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of them. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for them righteous friends, good friends, good suhba. This is very important. So when they see that, that their parents are fulfilling the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their, their, in their deeds, in their actions, and in their houses, there is a good environment, a righteous environment. And when they go out, when they meet their friends, this righteous environment expands in uh, its it involves these children, these, these friends whom they are with. So good environment inside the house, good environment outside the house. This is very important. We live in a time that all arrows are shooted against us, against our children. So when these arrows hit the child, then his life will be miserable. His life will be miserable because he will be away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he will be committing one sin after the other, after the other, without recognizing that this is a sin. And this was mentioned in... In Surah uh, Al-Mutaffifin, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, bal rana ala ma kanu yaksibun. So the heart is like a, a white page. Now imagine that each sin is a black dot on this white, white page. If this uh, black dot is connected to another black dot, is connected to another black dot, which represents another sin and another sin, another black dot, then one day this white page will become black because of the black dots. So we have to do. Istighfar. Istighfar acts like a, an eraser that will erase those black dots to keep the page white, to keep the page pure, to keep the page ready to receive the lights of Allah, the lights of Sayyidina Muhammad, the light of the Quran that we read every day, the light of the salawat that we send every day to Sayyidina Muhammad. So our heart is ready. And this, this happens when we have the good suhba, when we have gatherings of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be in those gatherings. These are the gardens of faith. So try to get as much of these, of these gardens as you can. So the good suhbah is one of the ways that gets you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because with good suhbah, we get closer we get how we feel our maqam is being elevated because of the words of these good suhbas of those who give give classes of those who give nasiha this is purely for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what they say comes out of their hearts and what comes out of the heart reaches the heart so the message is, is taken fully. So 
One one thing is uh, highly rewarded. So this is an example of uh, something that is really highly rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's practicing patience. Practice patience with your parents, with your friends, with your society, with your every single time you you are being attacked, uh, you are being uh, mistreated. Practice patience. Of course, act wisely. But if you can oppress your uh, anger, this is practicing patience. And this is highly rewarded. Those who forgive, those who forgive a Muslim brother or a Muslim sister for a mistake that they did for them, those will be highly rewarded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves these people. He loves those who practice patience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once showed, showed a person a palace on the day of judgment. And the person said, who, who is this palace for? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is for the one who pays its price. And the man asked, surprisingly, he, he asked, Ya Allah, what is its price? And Allah says, forgiving your brother for a bad deed he did for you. And the man said, I accept, Ya Allah. I witness that I, I forgive him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded him. rewarded this person. So, as I mentioned, there are so many examples, so many examples for being highly rewarded. And our concern today, our, uh, uh, our example, the first example that we mentioned is the like of of the grain that was planted and how much it gave. So how much the reward is. And we said, uh, we, we talked about paying sadaqah. Now, we have to thank those sisters, those brothers who collect money to help those who are less fortunate. And to tell you the truth, it's really a chance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to gain some good deeds. So when we hear of someone asking for money to help others, we have to jump in, even if it's a small amount. So do not, do not belittle the reward. Even if it is a small amount, it will be highly rewarded. You never know which good deed will save you. You never know which good deed will help you on the day of judgment. You don't know which good deed will elevate your maqam on the day of judgment. So let's not be of those who feel sorry on the day of judgment to see the blessings of uh, those who are higher in, a, in their maqam, higher than their maqam, and that the, uh, we, know, we know that the, one of the names of the day of judgment of Yawm al-Qiyamah is Yawm al-Hasra, the day when people feel sorry. If you think about it, is it just those who did not obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya 
uh, when they saw the hellfire, they feel sorry for themselves. They feel sorry that they did not follow the right way. That's one thing. But even the people of Jannah, they feel sorry. Why? They feel sorry that when they see the reward of the higher maqams, of the peoples of the, of, uh, of the higher maqams, then they will feel sorry that they did not do more dhikr, they did not uh, do, they did not help other, uh, more help to others, they did not do, send more salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad, they did not do more dhikr, they did not attend the uh, uh, extra uh, gatherings of remembering Allah. So, it is Yawmul Hasra. So, going back to the very first point, whatever, you, whatever good you do in this dunya, in this life, you will be recorded. It will be recorded for you, and you will be rewarded for that. For that deed that you have done and just just always remember that all you do is saved all you 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 practice or whatever whatever you do whatever you see whatever you look at whatever you hear whatever you wherever you go everything is recorded and you will be judged, you will be either rewarded or punished as per your deeds. So everything is saved. And who is it saved with? With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the most just, the one who multiplies the rewards as much as he wills, and the one who consider who uh, assign just one bad deed for for the bad or for the evil deeds that we make. So just imagine that Allah is multiplying your rewards, is giving you way more than what you do. You know, when you do something good, your heart is at ease that one day you will be rewarded. Never, ever do something for anyone and expect a thank you return for that, for that deed. Because if you expect some, some type of reward for something you do for others and you don't get it, you will get depressed. And you will lose your, your reward in the day after. Just be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do your deeds only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have your intentions for, the, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. Why? Inna Allah bima ta'amaloona basir. Indeed, of uh, uh, Allah, of what you do, is seeing. He knows everything. Nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even what you mentioned to yourself, Allah knows it. So, so we mentioned that the reward will be 10 times up to 700 or even extra. What is this extra? Allah says in Surah Yunus, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَى وزيادة. ولا يرهق وجوههم قطر ولا ذلة أولئك أصحاب الجنة هم فيها خالدون for them for them who have done is the best reward and extra so those who have done good they will have the best reward and they will have extra الحسنة وزيادة no darkness will cover their faces on the day of judgment. No humiliation. humiliation. Those are the companions of paradise. Those are the people of paradise. 
and they will abide there in, in eternally eternally so they did good and they deserve uh, a great reward so what is this ziyada okay what is this the ziyada what is this extra it is the multiplication of the reward of the good deeds, which might exceed 700 folds. But the word ziyada was interpreted differently. And Sayyidina Muhammad uh, mentions this. Abu Hurairah narrated that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <clears throat> so this is what Abu Hurairah narrated, he reported that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when the dwellers of Jannah enter Jannah, an announcer will, will call. You have a promise from Allah that you will live therein and you will never die. You will stay healthy therein in Jannah and you will never fall ill. You will stay young and you will never become old. You will be under a constant bliss and you will never feel miserable. And in another hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lift the cover, will lift the hijab between him and, and those people who will receive the ziyada, the extra. And they will look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will feel the utmost happiness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only is the only one who decides the, the, how much the reward is. So with this, we, we come to an end of this hadith that we have looked into. Actually, if we want to talk about it, it will take us days, days, and days, and days, and weeks, and we will not cover the deep meanings of this hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will reward us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will multiply our reward. And the best reward for us is to be with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Insha'Allah, until we meet next week, I send my salam to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, accompanied with your salam. And we tell him, we love you, Ya Rasulullah. And we are longing to you, Ya Rasulullah. We are asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to grant us to a, a visit to his uh, uh, Bayt al-Haram, to his sanctuary, and a visit to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With this, we end our session for today. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.